I, I, I actually just stumbled into this. Uh, I did not set out uh, to do astronomy. I uh, studied physics as an undergraduate, and then I went to MIT, and I got a doctorate in physics. Uh, I did my uh, doctoral work in experimental high-energy physics. I was having drawings made for my thesis uh, there at MIT. I was talking to one of the draftsmen, and I didn't know what, what I wanted to do, where I wanted to work. He told me about this group of uh, MIT scientists who had started a little company, and they did space research. Uh, it was American Science and Engineering, where Giacconi was uh, executive vice president. Uh, so I contacted them, and I went to work there. Uh, later, many of them came to Harvard. I, I followed, so I came here. I actually started working on the Apollo program, studying the moon. We were looking at uh, the composition of the lunar surface based on the x-rays from the sun illuminating the surface and producing emission that you could detect from the orbiting command module. So in fact, I, I've been working on solar x-rays ever since then. Uh, but what happened was a year later, uh, the Skylab was launched. Uh, it had this X-ray telescope in addition to other instruments. It was uh, in some way similar to Solar B in that there was a collection of uh, telescopes looking at the sun. Uh, and they needed somebody to work on that project. I joined them, and that's when I started working on uh, solar X-rays. And I've really been doing that ever since. It's uh, 30 years now. The solar corona is, in astronomical terms, very large. It takes up a fairly large uh, angular size on the sky. It's, it's a half a degree. So you need a large number of pixels, large number of picture elements in your detector in order to see the sun. On top of that, it's changing very quickly. Uh, seconds. So you need to be able to take pictures every few seconds. So you take this large number of pixels, you take the rapidity of images that's required, and that translates into the need for a large number of photons per second in order to be able to see the changes. Uh, and there are no detectors that can count that many individual photons that quickly. So we need to build a detector that integrates the way film does. You open your, your shutter for a while, collect some light, close your shutter. You've integrated the light onto the detector. And that's the way uh, these photon counting CCDs and similar pixel array detectors work in your camera uh, that you use you know, just to snap photos of your friends and your vacation. Uh, they integrate. They open the shutter for a while, close it. They, they don't count individual photons. Uh, that's what we typically do when we look at the sun. This project that we refer to here as Solar B is part of a joint Japanese U.S. and U.K., uh, in fact, uh, investigation. It's a, uh, mainly a Japanese mission with major participation by the United States in which uh, the U.S. is involved in three instruments on this uh, Solar B mission. Uh, so we here at SAO are, in fact, the X-ray telescope part of this participation. Uh, I am the US PI of the XRT. Uh, there is a Japanese principal investigator, that's what PI means, and uh, in Japan he is the principal investigator of the X-ray telescope. Uh, so my role is to oversee 
the NASA funded portion of this, which is the main part of the X-ray telescope. We're building the entire instrument, which includes the special X-ray mirrors, uh, the various mechanisms that are involved, filter wheels, shutters, things like that, uh, this big tube that holds it all together. Uh, the Japanese are building the camera, the X-ray sensitive detector that goes at the end of the telescope. And then this entire instrument will be attached to the Solar B spacecraft. Uh, now the Solar B uh, is a set of instruments. There's a large optical telescope that operates in the visible. Uh, there is our X-ray telescope, which sits alongside. It's bolted up against the side of the optical telescope, co-aligned with it, so it looks at the same place on the sun. There is a spectrograph, uh, which takes an image of the spectrum uh, in the ultraviolet. That's uh, mainly a UK experiment with uh, some major involvement from the Naval Research Lab. That instrument will be delivered also to the Japanese to be launched. And there is a focal plane package, as it's called, which is a set of instruments that operate from the main optical telescope. And that's being built mainly by Lockheed Martin in California and High Altitude Observatory in Boulder. Uh, and again, some substantial pieces of that are being built by the Japanese. Uh, and that will be attached also to the spacecraft, uh, to the observatory, as we would call it, once it's all completed. Uh, and the whole thing will be launched on a Japanese rocket. People are now used to seeing these uh, images of the solar corona that are this red, yellow, white uh, color scheme. Uh, I actually was involved in developing that color scheme. The principal investigator of the Skylab X-ray telescope that I worked on was Giuseppe Viana, Pipo Viana, one of the developers of this field of uh, uh, X-ray imaging, especially for the solar corona. Uh, and we recorded on black and white film at that time. Now, X-rays don't have color. If you wanted to say that they were colored, they would be blue. They're shorter wavelength than visible light. And the shorter wavelength end is the violet, the ultraviolet. Uh, there's the extreme ultraviolet beyond that, and then there's X-rays. So we are way far into the blue if you want to uh, try to assign a color, but of course the eye doesn't see x-rays, so there is no color. Uh, we worked a lot on how to display the uh, a color scheme for these images, and we came up with this red-yellow thing, and, uh, and it was Vianna's doing, and I helped implement it. it it's become very popular uh, it's the way the sun is typically represented, but of course the sun, the x-rays don't have a color. That's artificially put there. Now in terms of the uh, visible light image, uh, we have this x-ray telescope, which is bolted to one side of this big optical telescope. On the other side there is this spectrometer, uh, and then there is the optical telescope with its focal plane package. Those are three separate instruments. They are all looking at the sun, and we have to be able to put together the different images coming from these three different instruments. Plus, we're going to be coordinating with ground-based observatories, which will also be looking at the sun using other methods and other wavelengths. And you want to be able to co-align all these images, put them into registration with, with each other. Uh, and this is to a very high precision. 
that we have to do this. Uh, we're talking about a tenth of an arc second. And uh, give you some idea what a tenth of an arc second is. Uh, if you were a duck hunter in Maine and you were shooting at a duck in Los Angeles, you would hit it with a tenth of an arc second accuracy. So we're talking about tremendous precision. Um, it's almost impossible to build instruments that are that closely aligned and that stay that aligned through launch, up in space with all the thermal stresses that are pulling on the different instruments and trying to bend uh, the tubes and, uh, and then on top of that trying to coordinate with the ground. So you need some sort of way within each instrument to tell you where you're looking to overlap with the data that the other instruments are taken so that you can cross-register them. And that's what the visible light telescope in our instrument does. We, we, we have a visible light telescope which is co-aligned with our X-ray telescope so that we can take images and show how the X-ray image and the visible light image are co-aligned. Now the visible light image is the photosphere of the sun. It's got the sun spots. It's got finer structure called granulation. Those structures are seen by the optical telescope. So we can co-align our X-ray image to what the optical telescope is seeing by using the visible light image as an intermediary. Now with the spectrograph, we can expect to be able to co-align to them with the X-ray image because they are seeing the X-rays. Uh, so <laughs> this visible light imager is actually a crucial part of getting all three of these to co-align with each other. Contamination. Uh, there are various oils and greases and hydrocarbons that can get onto the surface of your mirror or onto the surface of your detector, uh, which will reduce the performance. It will prevent the x-rays from getting through because it will uh, absorb them. Uh, so you want to keep contaminants like that off of uh, all the parts involved. Uh, you want to, to begin with, build your instrument out of parts that don't produce such contaminants. So there's a big, long, uh, involved set of procedures to select materials, uh, that to test the materials so that they don't produce unwanted contaminants. Uh, you have to worry about uh, things that produce dust and chips. Uh, for one thing, uh, chips that are big enough during launch will come crashing through your delicate filters and break them. Uh, smaller chips, uh, dust, if it gets on the mirrors, uh, will reduce the performance of the telescope because uh, it will cover the surface of your mirror so that that bit of surface doesn't reflect x-rays anymore. So you have to keep dust off the mirrors as much as possible. If dust gets on your detector, uh, you've got spots in your image. And you can't go brush it off because it's up in orbit going uh, seven miles, a, five miles a second at a height of 600 kilometers. Uh, you can't get to it. So the, the dust on your detector will be there forever. A group of us are taking Japanese lessons. Uh, just because we don't like being illiterate when we go over there. You go over there, you can't read the signs, you can't read the newspapers, you don't know what people are saying. Uh, it's an unusual feeling. Uh, we've been studying for three years now. It's clear that I will never be able to read a newspaper. <laughs> but at least I can read menus in restaurants now. And uh, most of the people we deal with speak English quite well, so we don't need to learn Japanese, but we want to. And it's, it's a different way of thinking, uh, so it, it, it's interesting.